So Warhammer 40k is a game of five turns, but sometimes the outcome can be apparent long in advance. Let's talk about the etiquette of conceding games in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd do a quick video revisiting the topic of conceding games in Warhammer. Maybe a bit of an interesting grey area where people have different expectations as to what is normal and what isn't, and talk about a bit of the positives and negatives of conceding, which I think can absolutely be the right thing to do in certain situations, as it can stop you wasting a bit of time, but also I think you generally want to do so while being polite to your opponent. For this video I thought we'd talk about conceding as one player choosing to end a game of Warhammer early, declaring the other player as one without needing to fully play through all the rest of the turns. I feel like most of the time in games it's nice enough to try and play through the game to conclusion, but sometimes that's not always possible or desirable, and there might be a few reasons that you want to drop early and perhaps talk things out a little bit. I think there's plenty of pretty reasonable reasons why people might want to concede a game that's clearly going one way, Lack of time might be a pretty reasonable one, say one player needs to leave by a certain time for other life commitments outside models, or the game store or hobby club is closing, or maybe even just lack of energy if you happen to have been going to a big tournament or something, and it's the last game on the second day. People's energy levels might be starting to flag a little bit, at least some people might prefer to try and wrap up the last game a bit briefly, particularly if they don't think that the outcome's particularly in doubt, and they've had most of or all of the enjoyment out of it already. Otherwise though, besides external factors, in general it tends to be a bit of a decision as to whether or not there's still enough enjoyment for the one player to keep on playing, maybe not wanting to waste too much time over a foregone conclusion in the game, a game that they can tell they've already lost just by the board state, the points on the objectives or the models on the table, but actually getting to the point where you've formally lost and you've played through all the rest of the turns could actually take really quite a long time. I feel like games often just become a lot less interesting once the outcome isn't really in any big doubt. In Warhammer, I think there's often ways that you can make games like this more entertaining, though it depends on the game state and maybe how you're feeling at the time. It can just be a bit dispiriting to just watch your opponent roll handfuls of dice at you and gradually pick up the last few of your forces in a slightly slow and painful way. I think that people will be a bit more likely to concede a game, particularly if the opponent's list maybe isn't very engaging, maybe little chance for interaction with your few remaining units or other cool things that could happen towards the end of the game. And also just if your opponent maybe hasn't been the most polite or engaging themselves. In general, I suspect people might be far less likely to concede if you're having a good time and having a good chat with the other player while they go about removing big chunks of your army, as opposed to if they're just rather grimly going through the motions and not really talking stuff with you so much and not making it much of a social experience, or even have just been playing a bit impolitely with lax measurements and soft cheating and things like that. I think between those, there's definitely a lot of areas where it can certainly be the right decision to offer to concede, though at the same time I'd say that it's certainly possible to concede in a way where you're being the impolite one, perhaps just to dial things up to extremes, say for example a player turns up with a perfectly strong army list that should give you a balanced game, makes some bad decisions and say deploys everything in the open turn 1, gambling on going first, then understandably lose a chunk of their army, maybe it's enough to make the game a bit of an uphill struggle for them, maybe it's just a big psychological blow, and then immediately decide that there's no way back from this and give up at the end of turn 1 or something, get very sulky and mutter about how broken the opponent's army is, throw all their models in a box and storm out. I say that's clearly a bit out of proportion, and if that's your attitude to losing in a game, you probably shouldn't have bothered trying to play in the first place. It's just a bit of a waste of everyone's time, as no one's going to be enjoying that. You certainly have different sort of spectrums of a game of Warhammer 40k from competitive to casual, but in general when people get together to play games, they'd like to have a, a fun game of model soldiers, as that's what we're all there for. And for the most part, I think if you're a bit oversensitive to setbacks turn 1 or turn 2, you may be not really giving that much of a chance to happen. And even if through some big combination of bad luck, bad decisions, or just bad organisation of the game to start with, then you're feeling like you should concede turn 1 or turn 2. Something has maybe gone a bit wrong there. I think generally when I'm playing a game of Warhammer 40k, I'd usually at the very least be expecting to play 3-4 turns out of it, even if one army was getting crunched or destroyed one way or the other. I feel like even if it isn't the best game of 40k that you'll have ever had, I'd usually say that you can spare the amount of time to allow the first few turns to happen out before offering to concede and talk it out. I think I'd perhaps only be tempted to call it before then if the other person was being actively unpleasant, or there's maybe some sort of chance to declare the other person's one and then just restart the game, maybe trying to make things a bit more balanced or engaging. 
Aside from if you're just not getting along with the person that you're playing, I feel like maybe the other reasons for very early concedes like that are probably going to be more down to bad planning rather than anything else. Maybe just not communicating or having poor decisions when you're setting up the game in the first place. I feel like for most things in Warhammer 40k, unless you're playing some very mismatched armies on some bad terrain, or one player's making some horrendous tactical decisions, things shouldn't normally be over by turn 1 or turn 2. It might be that you've just not had the discussion as to what sort of game you want if you've turned up with something really casual and the opponent's turned up with something that's an absolute top meta beast of an army. Or perhaps playing a hard counter to an army, say for example Imperial Knights playing against an army list that's got 100% anti-tank weapons and basically having very little chance not to just get gunned off the table. Or the other way around when they're playing something that doesn't have enough anti-tank weapons and they're just going to be able to stride through the enemy army at will smashing things. You might also think about terrain placement as well. In general, 10th edition is usually aims to be played on some fairly dense tables with good line of sight blocking where you're able to hide a good chunk of your army. In general, that should mean that there's sort of limited ability to lose too much of your army too early in the game, at least unless someone deploys ridiculously aggressively and then gets punished for that. For the most part, I think if you're losing, say, 500 to 1,000 points of models turn 1 to enemy shooting, then you might have either needed more terrain or to hide your miniatures a bit better. There is still some scope for just hugely bad luck and something getting killed that really shouldn't early in the game that could essentially determine the outcome straight away, but I'd say that tends to be kind of few and far between. Perhaps similarly, on the communication side of things, it might just be worth stating if the opposing player's got a preference to really not play into just one grim sort of army. Some people really don't like playing sort of stat check armies where you just have to see if you can kill a certain numbers of bodies off the board. Maybe things like custodies might classically fall into that even if they aren't super strong right now. Or just basically anything else where the opponent can't really interact with things. Maybe an army that's got way loads of artillery or is just move shoot moving so you can never catch up or damage their units. And classically, pure gunline armies tend to fall into that a little bit, but I would say that if you're playing with adequate terrain, that's less of an issue, as they'll still need to move and push forwards to claim objectives and get line of sight, otherwise they're not going to be able to deal their damage. In general, I'd usually aim not to drop too early, and perhaps particularly so if the main reason that you want to concede is just due to one enormously bad swing of a turn. Say your opponent has just killed a key unit that you really didn't think they'd be able to. It can be massively disheartening when you've basically just lost the core of your battle plan. Even if it's very disheartening when that sort of thing happens, I'd usually try and be as objective as possible. Often 40k really isn't all that predictable, at least not for the average player. Certainly like top tournament players and experienced people might know when they've probably lost. But even then there might be a good chance to just play for objectives to get victory or try and punish the enemy units that have just swung back with what you've got left. With 40k's I go, you go system, you can often have enormous swings from one turn to the next, where it can feel like one person's really on the back foot, but actually they've just overextended with a bunch of fragile damage dealers, and you can punish them very, very hard, even with a small amount of units in your next turn. I feel like usually a big turn swing with the psychological impact of that is not usually a good reason to concede, even if it can feel very, very tempting to. Even if in theory the game should be lost as well, there's at least a reasonable chance that your opponent doesn't play optimally and makes some sort of big mistake later on that allows you to catch back up a bit. And as a dice game, there's often just a good chance for a bit of luck allowing you to catch up to. Sure, everything could go your opponent's way from then on in, but they might do something silly like fail a 5-inch charge or focus all of their anti-tank weapons on your vehicle with a 5-plus invulnerable save and then it just unaccountably survives. Weird swings of luck do happen, and if you don't roll out the dice, then you won't even know if you had the chance to get them. Otherwise, for negatives though, as mentioned, it might annoy the other player if you've done it too impolitely, as mentioned. I definitely want to offer to concede in the right way. And it could maybe have an issue for tournament standings, as if you don't play out the rest of the game, it's going to be a bit nebulous as to how secondaries and things are scored. If you're at an event, at least not properly talking things out and seeing what would be scored, could maybe make the difference between a first place or second place on tiebreakers and things like that, and maybe isn't the best idea for that sort of thing. Beyond that though, I'd hope that most people out there could at least get some sort of fun from playing a game of Warhammer win or lose, and even if it does feel pretty clear that you've probably lost a game, I still feel that most of the time, if you're playing against a fun opponent, there's still going to be a fair few opportunities for enjoyment, even if your arm is getting absolutely stomped off the board. You could maybe just switch mindset a little bit from trying to win and playing the tactics to just playing a bit more narratively, go for a few glory kills or revenge on one particularly hated enemy unit that took out some of your best elites, or putting yourself in your shoes of your commander and deciding what they'd do in the lore. 
Maybe a glorious bayonet charge against those Chaos Terminators is exactly what a losing Imperial Guard commander would order. Otherwise, just for gameplay, I feel like you can often learn a lot and get some good lessons out of defeats, certainly realising what went wrong and why you might try and avoid that next time, but also just trying to make the absolute best use of your limited assets left on the board, maybe trying to use things as creatively as possible to get the last few victory points that you might be able to do for secondary objectives or primaries in a last-ditch defensive action or try and deny the opponent as many points as you can, and you might be able to learn a bit more about your units from trying to use them in tricky situations that you could apply to games that are a bit more balanced. If you did want to try and give yourself every chance of turning around, you could go for big and risky players, maybe things that are unlikely to really work out, but if they did somehow unaccountably work and you made, say, a really massive charge, it could actually be game-changing, maybe flipping objectives, or taking out one enemy damage dealer unit that really shouldn't die. You might be unlikely to get those results, but if you did, then it might be enough to turn things around. In the 10th edition missions, you've also got the option of trying the Gambit missions as well, bin off your remaining secondaries to have a big chance of getting a whole bunch of victory points at the end of the game. By design, it's kind of unlikely to ever actually flip the game from a win to a loss, and that's probably for the best, but it can be entertaining and can give you a last-ditch mission to try and achieve while your opponent's stomping up the board trying to take down everything else. If things really are going south though, I'd probably not agonise too much about every little decision, playing fairly promptly, and maybe not stressing too much about every fine little positioning advantage if it's quite clear the game's gone one way already. Maybe even offering just two pull units that quite clearly will be dead from say a big charge from some enemy elites just to speed things up a little. I'd say that's also go for the winning player as well, if you're clearly stomping someone I'd certainly not be trying to gratuitously drag out every little damage interaction as you maul the last remnants of their army with a big intact force. can just be a bit boring for the other player to watch you roll dice at them for a long time. As mentioned though, I absolutely think that it can be the best option to go for in the right situation. If you've just got a few units left on the board that aren't really going to achieve much and the opponent's army is pretty intact and ahead on the victory points, it can just be pretty reasonable to accept defeats and maybe just talk out the last few interactions of the game and how they'd go without having to go through the formal turn process bit by bit and being a little bit generous to your opponent. I think I'd usually frame it as asking to concede rather than just announcing that you're not playing on. In reality, I think it would be a very rare opponent that would make any issue about you doing so. No one's going to force you to continue playing a model soldier game that you don't wish to, even if it might be a bit dispiriting if you don't feel that the matchup's been very fair power-wise, or you've had some ridiculously bad luck and still try and keep it polite and respectful. Warhammer's rarely a balanced game, both in terms of miniature army power disparity, and also people have very different experiences and know how to command armies better or worse, and not take any one result too much to heart. I feel like some players can get very dispirited just by one loss in game, more so than they should do, really. I'd probably wait until the end of the opposing turn or the end of the battle round to do that as well, rather than trying to cut things halfway through. That just looks a little bit eager and desperate. As mentioned before, you might have the chance to start over if there's enough time, maybe declaring that, yes, I shouldn't have played so aggressively. I'm pretty happy that you've won this now. Could we maybe try and go again in the time that we've got left, as it might be a bit more of a fun and engaging game, rather than just you continuing to stomp me for the last couple of turns? That might kind of depend on time constraints. Maybe it could be a bit more doable if you're both playing pretty elite armies that don't take as long to command as some. Finally, I think I'd usually want to try and get to the outcome of a game at least by talking it through a little bit towards the end. This is fairly common to happen in tournament games and things, at least in my experience. And it's just kind of useful for determining the last few interactions of a game, mainly focusing on the last few victory points that would have scored, what primary objectives each player could reasonably hope to achieve, and drawing out the secondary objective cards and how they'd think about going about doing them. Often towards the end of the game, a lot of the damage output and whether or not you kill enemy units actually really doesn't matter all that much. It just matters whether you can get units onto points or contest or hold objectives. And if there is like one unit that you absolutely need to know whether they live or die or not, you could potentially roll that bit out. Say for example, just saying that I'd focus like these two units to try and take down that unit, as that's the only thing that matters for actually scoring me any more victory points. Could be fun as well just to roll through any really quite interesting cinematic moments as well, seeing if one of your two warlords manages to slay the other one, even if it's not something that's actually really all that relevant to the victory of the game, can give you a little bit of moral bragging rights. Often this might just be due to time constraints and trying to work out who's won a game before the store closes or the round comes to an end in an event. If one player's just conceding because they've lost though, I'd certainly aim to be pretty generous with the interpretation of the scores, if you really care that much about what sort of victory points you can score. 
you could probably just continue playing. In any case though, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Have you had any games where you've conceded or your opponent has and it's been a good experience or a bad experience? Look forward to hearing a few anecdotes as to what's worked well and what hasn't. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, while certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.